how and why to make brush piles on your farm or ranch. Hi, I'm Ken Berry uh, with OB Farms and I am turning very dense, uh, deciduous hardwood jungle, slowly but surely, into silvo pasture. And in the process, I'm making lots of brush piles. You can see one over there. There's another one right there. And today I'm working on this brush pile and I'm gonna be cutting up this old snag and moving all this over to this brush pile. Now you might ask, why don't you just burn that and get it out of the way? Because whatever square footage underneath this brush pile is obviously not gonna grow any grass. And I think that's an excellent question. Some people do burn this stuff and that does increase the soil fertility for maybe one or two seasons, but then that's gone. It's almost like uh, putting phosphorus and nitrogen on the pasture. It's something you need to start doing every year or every two years. And I'm not interested in that. I want this soil to be self-productive, self-fertile, full of worms, full of trillions of bacteria that are digesting all this carbon you see laying around and turning it into nice, rich, dark soil. So these brush piles, what's the point? Why would I do this? Well, first of all, it's a great workout, dragging brush and flipping these big logs. I'm gonna cut this log, you see I cut it right there. That's just a big enough section where I can barely pick up one in and flip this log and I'll flip them over into the brush pile. And then I'll drag all the tops and put on top of the brush pile. And this brush pile is probably 10 feet wide by 10 feet and it's gonna wind up being about eight or 10 feet tall. Now, why would I waste the, the square meters of pasture space to do that? Here's why. All this wood is sequestered carbon, right? Uh, in the form of lignin, mostly, a little bit of cellulose. And so that's gonna lay there. There are trillions of microbes and hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of insects that will eat this wood and digest it and then poop it out on my pasture. Maybe only a foot from there, but every time it rains, the poop is gonna wash down the, the slope of the pasture and that's gonna be fertility for the soil and for grass that I hope to grow one day. You can see a few sprigs, but not much yet. Also, this, pr this provides habitat for wild animals. I really, really want there to be rabbits, quail, uh, chipmunks, maybe I might even try to bring pheasants back to this area. Uh, birds will nest in this. And so not only am I increasing the fertility of the soil, not just for one or two seasons, but for maybe five or six years, I'm providing all kinds of habitat to small mammals and small birds so that they're not easy pickings for coyotes and foxes. Because currently there's so many thousands of acres monocropped here in Benton County with soybean and corn and a little bit of cotton, not much, that if there is a, if there's a rabbit or a quail or a, a mouse or a vole or a mole out in a, a field, it's going to be dinner. It's not going to be able to reproduce. And you may think of these things as varmints, but when you're, when you're trying to have a civil pasture operation, these things are actually net benefits. And so if I have a couple of nests full of bird eggs every season in this brush pile, that's a good thing because they're going to eat tens of thousands of flies that would be bugging my sheep or, or mosquitoes that'll be bugging me and they'll be pooping everywhere they fly, right? And so it's, it's just this never ending cycle of stimulating the land, fertilizing the land, and then ultimately when they do die, that'll be the ultimate act of fertilization to enrich the soil as they become some other form of life. And so I'm very excited. Uh, there's another big one over on that hillside. I try to keep them as far apart as I can, but you know, if you've ever drug brush, you know that you can only drag it so far if you wanna have enough energy left to make it to the house later that day because it is a CrossFit workout. So that's why. Now let's talk about how. So what I typically do, and I don't think there's any right or wrong way, I think you just pile up a bunch of brush and that makes a brush pile. But what I typically try to do is take these logs that are anywhere from 10 inches down to four inches, and I try to line the base of it with these big logs. And what that does is it, it creates tunnels and tracks and little pockets underneath the brush pile so that rabbits, 
chipmunks, other mammals uh, can have lots of places to hide from coyotes and foxes. And also they can have their litters there and increase the amount of biodiversity on this farm. And so after I've got all the big logs stacked at the bottom, roughly, it does not have to be pretty. This is a brush pile. This is not a work of art. Roughly piled underneath, then I'll go back to the, to the second biggest uh, brush with the biggest piece of wood and I'll pile that on top. And then I go back one final time with all the lightweight stuff and I pile that on top of that. And so I'm gonna go ahead and, and I'm gonna fix this one up and get it finished and then I'll show you the finished product. There, now I've increased the amount of square footage in the pasture that's receiving sunlight. I got rid of a tree that wasn't doing me any good, cut it up, got some good exercise, and now I've got a nice big habitat for multiple species of wildlife. My friend Greg Judy calls them rabbitats because rabbits love these things. And you can see I've got new grass coming up underneath. And now that'll get more sunshine i got a good workout didn't i but what's going to happen with this if i had burned this brush pile i would have released probably a ton of carbon into the atmosphere and whether you believe that's a problem or not that's something that you can uncover with your own study but what i do know is that burning brush stinks really bad and if the wind's blowing just right it's going to blow onto my neighbor's property into her house and she will not appreciate that but by doing this, I'm keeping all of the carbon sequestered right there. And trillions of organisms and bugs are going to come and they're going to eat that stuff. That's going to be a bug and microbe feast. And then they're going to fertilize the ground all around that and underneath that. While I've got several generations of wildlife that will now have a protected home where the, the foxes and the coyotes cannot easily get to them. And so... I'm very happy making these brush piles. There's one over there. There's a bunch over there. But I've gotten so much good uh, exercise. I've done so many reps of log lifts and log flips. I'm always careful. Now you may have noticed I, I'm not wearing all the safety gear when I use my uh, chainsaw. I am a doctor, but I'm also a bit of a hard head. I encourage you to wear all the safety gear, but I'm probably not gonna do that. So. Until next time, this is your friend Ken Berry at OB Farms. Keep on ranching, keep on farming.